A few years ago, I was at a Produced by Conference, and I heard a term I had never heard before, and I use it now all the time. And that term was snowflake workflows. And the word snowflake has acquired a different meaning. It, that does not mean workflows that are uh, sensitive to criticism. Uh, it means no two are alike. And uh, that's uh, nowadays at Variety, after covering uh, visual effects and post for 13 years, I now am mostly a video producer and director. <coughs> so I'm dealing with snowflake workflows. So let me go to our panel and ask one question. I'll ask everybody to, to start. We'll start on the far end and work our way this way to answer this question briefly. What's the single biggest mistake you're seeing as producers and production set up their workflows? And why is that mistake such a problem? I would say the first one is not testing the workflow. Um, I think there are, you know, every, every production is, uh, is a group of experienced people who have maybe never worked together for the first time. They all have different ideas of what the best practice is. And uh, through negotiation, they come to a workflow of some sort and uh, then just say, let's go do that. Um, and then you end up working it out on the first day of shooting, which shakes everybody's confidence. And um, really just at, at that point, you're just playing catch up for the first week and nobody <coughs> really feels good. So I think testing is paramount, I think, when, when you're establishing a workflow. Mitch? I would, uh, I would say it's not taking a far, looking at the forest for the trees sort of uh, mentality where there's far too often uh, people, they kind of break down into little fiefdoms of, you know, well, here's in production and here's in post-production and then, and they only think about one part of it at a time. And if you take into consideration the whole of your workflow, uh, you know, the, of every step along the way, you can really start prioritizing certain things, but also recognize, well, if I have to end up here, then that can influence where I start there, both to make it easier, but also to make it more effective, and it might cost less money, but it also might, you know, give you a better result along the way and less painful to get from A to Z. Uh, if you think about what Z is in the first place, you might not, you know, you might change your mind about how you want to uh, attack A in order to get there, because otherwise uh, you start painting yourself into a corner. Michael? Uh, you stole my thunder a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd say the, the biggest one I see is not considering how production decisions are going to play all the way through the process to the, to the very end, to the post stages. Uh, typical example would be a you know, desire to shoot GoPro totally valid choice for lots and lots and lots of reasons. It turns out that GoPro is a more challenging camera and codec to work with in post, which it's all great as long as you know what you're getting into when you make that decision to pick a particular camera, pick a particular codec. Please consider how it's going to play all the way through the process, all the way to the, the end when you now have to work with it in post. Mark? Uh, yeah, mine is uh, not considering a workflow. I guess speaking mainly of like indie features where it's such a struggle to even get the camera rolling and sometimes you start shooting before you've hired a post supervisor uh, or let alone an editor uh, hmm. and then you see things, the, the, the direction things tend to go in my experience is then you end up shooting a camera with a bigger file size, a more hefty codec than the project really demands and that creates cost trickles throughout post. Steven? Well, everybody's pretty much covered it, but I was just going to say, I mean, for me, what's always important on my films is just making sure that everybody who's involved in the technical part of the process, similar to what you were saying about testing, um, is involved in, in the workflow conversation early before things start. Um, you know, I do movies that are kind of all over the map between small indie films and studio films. So when I'm doing a studio film, we have more of a machine that can get everybody organized. When I do a smaller indie film, um, we don't always have everything in place like you were saying. But fortunately, I've been doing it long enough that I, you know, can sort of spearhead um, thinking about those decisions ahead of time. But it's really good to have uh, conversations, um, not the day before, but at least a you know, a week to 10 days before with all the departments about, you know, frame rates and, and uh, 
you know what 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 you're doing as far as your backups and and how you're protecting the uh, the uh, media and all of that and what's going to happen to it where it's going to go all of that kind of stuff and making sure everybody's on the same um, uh, you know page. Mm-hmm.